New Arcade in 1922. The startling develops agency is aptly named. Through a combination of dumb luck, vague prophecy, and the occasional, uh... Murder, they were killing gods left and right. Tycho Rasmus Brahe, son of Tycho Emeritus Brahe, has inherited his family's pension for the destruction of the entire universe. The trouble is that everyone else keeps trying to do it first. He likes long walks on the beach, eldritch weaponry, and oblivion. Jonathan Gabriel is... Well... He's gay. They have sought and finally secured the Necrowombicon, a loaf of incredible mystical wisdom but f every for everyone but them. Which brings us to Dr. Blood, whose piercing gaze and timely appearance in the narrative mark him as a man to watch. Uh, I missed, uh... I missed Seavoid's ridiculous stuff. Anyway, hello everybody, it's Sephiroth 204 for a brand new Let's Play for MuchGames.ca. Um, we're going to be playing Penny Arcades on the Rain Sick, Slick Precipice of Darkness 3. Uh, the third game made by Zeboid Games after uh, Cthulhu, uh, Breath of Death 7 and Cthulhu Saves the World. Um, I'm not going to use a controller, I'm just going to use the keyboard for now. Maybe I'll change it in the future. Um, bonus scenario that takes place before the main story. Yeah, let's not do that. Um, let's check out the options first. Uh, you know, at the screen I perfectly fine with already. Controller, controls, keyboard. Okay, um. And then press your desired key. I don't know, it should be fine. Um, actually no, it's custom, up, there we go, down, left, right. Um, let's do shift for run, confirm, confirm will be space, uh, cancel will be control, let's say menu is enter, fly, I don't know, um, Z, quit, I guess we'll escape, don't forget to save your settings, custom controls apply only in game. Ah, I missed that sound. Anyway, uh, I did a Let's Play of um, Breath of Death 7 on my channel a while back. Uh, it was really fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and uh, this game looks like it's closer to this. I, honestly, like I had the the most recent game I played by Z Boyd is Cosmic Star Hero, in which I would say is a serious game by them, as opposed to a parody or or whatever. Uh, this is based on the Penny Arcade. Um, comic series. There was two games before this that they did not make, um, but uh, this was suggested to me by uh, Mr. Movie, so, because um, he absolutely loves this game and Penny Arcade and everything involved with it, so uh, I figured I'd t check it out. Um, and yeah, I'm just remembering the, like, the sounds and everything from, from Breath of Death. This is like a very similar uh, graphical tile set. Uh, the the in-game graphics are a bit, bit better than uh, Breath of Death 7, which is made more like an NES game. But, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to this. Let's get into it. Uh, let's see. Normal finish, but not too hard. Difficult to be changed. Um, yeah, let's just do normal. Oh, God. Everyone looks like they're supposed to. Gender swap. That's kind of cool. The game feels pretty. Oh, so pretty. I didn't know we could be furries. Brains. As much as I want to do this, let's just go for the regular. <laughs> When two gods wait on the windowsill, the wick of the world is burning still. But when one god in triumph shouts, the candle of the world goes out. The quartet for the dusk of man, Tycho Ephemeris Bry. Bray? Bry? Bra? I don't know. Tycho Bra was like a, uh, uh, philosopher. But anyway, the startling develops detective agency is, uh, is never especially clean, but then neither is its line of work. Souvenirs of past cases line the back wall, their story is waiting to be told. I think that Hyperduck Soundworks, which is their sound people for uh, Cosmic Star Heroin, did this too. Maybe. HUNGRY! 
I have no idea what the voices are supposed to be, so excuse me for them being bad. Hungry! Not now, Gabriel. Must stare at the phone. We must stare at this phone. Man, do you remember when we used to do things that were awesome? Punching things, killing gods. Man, stuff used to be wild. Yeah, I'm censoring it, sorry. That was last week. Really? Yes. Startlingly, <laughs> the phone in the startling developed detective agency begins to ring. Ah! Tiger grabs the phone and begins to talk while Gabe jumps up and down. Yes. Uh-huh. You don't say. Time passes in this way. Grave nods interspersed with knowing grins. Tygo hangs up the phone. I love the, uh, the narration here. Who was it? A new case? Ten full minutes of silence. Why didn't you hang up? Didn't want to be rude. Moreover, this was no ordinary silence. That silence was dripping, dripping with meaning, and boiling with rich undercurrents of hidden context. And a hint, I think, of coriander. Anyway, this is uh, there's some meaning and context up in this. Of this, we may be certain. We should bring a recording of it to my genius niece, Anne Claire, for analysis. You got a phone conversation of silence. In the conversation of silence. Hello darkness, my old friend. I oh, know the background music kind of is going along with that. You sure about this? Could just be a prank call. Absolutely certain, with every taut fiber of my being. Maybe. Anyway, let's uh, check this place out. Prior to the inc incident, Jim had tons of flesh, loads and loads of it. It covered his bones completely. Those were good times. You know, with all the skin. Tycho picks, himself, uh, picks up a memento of glorious past and allows himself a moment of reflection. It was only two weeks ago that the wheels really started to come off of this universe, cosmologically speaking. The first sign was the revival of a mime cult in service of Yog seth this god of silence. Oh. Uh, spurred by the Necrowambicon, a mysterious book whose contents changed depending on the reader, the cult made a play for the Pelican Bay Boardwalk. Presumably they would have moved on from there, but who knows. Also, this is an RPG, by the way, if you didn't, couldn't tell. Um, Tycho, Gabe, and a mysterious third party smashed the cult, obliterated their god, and set a terrible clock into motion. Thanks for uh, letting us know what the plot of the game was. Gabe remembers punching a much larger version of this. He wishes he could punch that big one again. Alas, you can never go home. The king and queen went back to the green, but you can never go back there again. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. So yeah, that was, uh, I guess, in Rain Slick Precipice of Darkness, episode one. In the second outing in as many weeks, the Necroambicon was again at the quiet core of a whirling mystery. This mystery culminated, as they so often do, in a battle with a gigantic robot who was the very avatar of violation. Obviously, the giant robot was bad. It was made worse by the fact that it had been constructed by an unwitting act immortal to act as the earthly shell of Yogg-Kathak, god of mechanism. Our heroes managed to defeat it with the help of the incredibly weird Dr. Blood, whose arrival was no accident. Thank you for letting us know what the first two games are. Now I don't feel bad. Source is so much turmoil, the Necoromicon rests silently on the desk. Yes, I'm gonna check everything. I love the writing in Z-Boy games. His pages bear no trace of the recent plots. They're entirely clean. Each page is as white as a blizzard in a wedding gown. When you kill supernatural beings professionally, you start to end up with a lot of magical, magical crap. This crap seems to congregate, congregate on this table. The phone isn't magical, though. It's just a regular old phone. It would be a shame if it could. <laughs> Gabriel sleeps in here. Tycho will sometimes read him a story before gently closing the lid. It's actually a very nice gramophone, very nice indeed, but it doesn't really stand out here on the mystical bra menagerie. Bray? I'm going to say Bray. Um, uh, a big book stands open on the table. Analysis of the Quartet. I couldn't read for a second. Quartet for the Dusk of Man by Dr. Consortia Keel. One unanswered question is why the Quartet has only three verses? <laughs> Presumably it was somebody's idea of a joke. An eclectic selection crowds the corner. Books of apocalyptic recipes and packed suitcases lie in wait. On the table, a prototype harvest buddy tinks against its glass prison. On this long table, living books held together for warmth. At the end, the projector hungrily awaits film. So that's the same thing. Okay, cool. We can actually leave the room now. While on the new Arcadia map, you may only travel on unlocked paths. Press a space key while on a node to enter new areas, trigger story sequences, shops, and more. As you progress the story, you unlock additional paths and even greater adventure! Oh no, we can't go anywhere! I wonder what we could do, what we would do without Anne Claire. Suffer, I expect. I suspect, inconsolably, 
No, for serious, we'd be screwed for the real. On the real, whenever we run into some garbage, which, you know, kind of happens, it's always Anne Claire this, Anne Claire that. She basically runs your agency. We should call it the startling Devantic... <laughs> Devan... Opments. Devanipments, Detective. Claire Agent... Claire Agency. God, this is really hard. <laughs> Come now, Gabriel. There have been many, many instances where my keen intellect has revealed the way forward. Oh yeah, name one. Well, like the... Eckling quandary. The who? The magical puzzly box type thing. Doesn't count. Why not? I solved it. I just punched it until it broke open. Yes, you punched it. Under my close supervision. Hey. Oh, it's funny. It's just... In a hurry? No worries. Hold the left control key to run or press left shift to keep talking between run mode and walk mode. Run mode is now activated. Hey! hey -ya! Gabe punches the wooden gate open. Ow! Splinters! It's <laughs> cute. Good uncle! <laughs> Ultra knees! How goes the battle? Restless, after one has slain a god, one does develop a taste for it. I noosed the sentiment. Talk like normal people! I fear my associate doth tire of our elocutions. It is an adorable rage. Okay, well, yeah, that's that's how they sound now. Yes, like that. Just give us your dumb... Just give her your dumb tape. Ah, uh, yes. To the untrained ear, it sounds like nothing. It has no sound, but the true eldritch enthusiast wallows in... Complexitas. Are those complexities? Or are those, like, complexities? Or... They're similar. And Claire accepts the recording, winding the raw tape with uh, into the mouth of an entirely custom who's it what's it. Removing what looks like a phone receiver made from an old bell, she plays it in her ear for several long moments, then... Ah, you are right to be suspicious, Uncle. This phone call was made from Pelican Bay. Indeed, but how? And Claire cranks a knob hard right. <coughs> the Pelican. Pelican Harbor, of course! The vile boardwalk nightmare that was swarming with the Silent One's mimious minions fully two games ago, a mime must have called us. But why? Well, what if it was just like a bird calling? His eyes grow wide. Like an evil bird! That is way ridiculous, unlike all the incredible things I say, which are smart. To Pelican Bay! I shall accompany you, Uncle. But your studies, your physical and psychological well-being, your parents made your safety my responsibility. No, they didn't. They specifically said, Stay away from our daughter, you good-for-nothing, Bray! I was paraphrasing. In any case, they're not here, and I make my own decisions. Anne Claire has forced herself into your group. See? With clarity, child. Anne Claire has entrusted you with a duplicator. With this thoroughly implausible device, items you use in one battle will generate by the next fight. Hooray! Right now, the item duplicator only allows you to use a potion to heal and revive an ally once per battle, but by finding or pur purchasing upgrades, you can use uh, items multiple times in the same battle, improve their effects, or entire uh, unlock entirely new items. Pelican Bay has now been unlocked. Okay, so let's check out the menu here. Uh, so, so we have tech, magic, speed, defense, magic, defense. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty... Let's see... So we have a weapon slot and a armor or accessory slot. Uh, I forgot what cancel was already. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's see, class, brute, scholar, genius. Okay, I can't change the classes. So wait, he's level three, but she's level seven. Nice, neat, strong heal, all thermonuclear, heavy, holy magic. Nice. Now, what do you have? Uh, full auto, wait, sorry. Weak attack all, heals one ally, no effect on the dead, and first blood, weak attack, bonus damage in turn one. Okay, got it. Items, so we have a potion. We cap. Oh, that's nice. Um, Yay. Alright. Press enter uh, to open the main menu. Oh yeah, we just saw that. The game can be saved at any time outside combat story scenes to save often. Save early and save often. The boardwalk has seen better days. It is a ramshackle for real. Looks in danger of being reclaimed by the sea. Man, I thought this place was a garbage hole before. Gabriel remembers and Claire looks around nervously. I mean, poof hole. When Gabe approaches the entrance to the park, desperate for a change of topic, he spies a secret of strange marking and sees his opportunity. Whoa, what's this strange magical writing? Wow, it's so crazy. Hmm. 
It may be the silent one's ancient language. I will attempt to translate. To enter Yan Park, please insert 20 blue tokens, 30 green tokens, 40 red tokens, and 2,000 rainbow tokens. One random token may be acquired from each successfully one carnival game. What? No way, sign. I'm going home. And Claire stifles a laugh. Pay no heed to my niece, Gabriel. She's having a bit of fun at your expense. The script actually says, Kill every non-believer. Well, okay, I was worried there. Many, but not all of your abilities in battle require MP. Your characters regain 1 MP every turn. MP isn't carried over from fight to fight, so don't be afraid to use them. Enemies don't need MP to use their abilities, but don't underestimate them. Enemies get more powerful with each passing turn, so defeat them before it's too late. It's a similar, uh, similar to, uh, uh, the previous, uh, games in that regard. Okay, so we got an AT, uh, ATB, not ATB, like a thing there, wait, command, act, type of thing. Uh, so, you know what, let's, you can use first blood. Um, I don't have enough MP. Uh, let's see, on the prowl for one night fruit stand. Alright. Ow. Ow. I really like the uh, Final Fantasy VI type sprites. Alright, everybody's dead. Yay! All enemies have been defeated. All allies regain full HP. Gabriel goes hard on the knob, but alas, no go. You find a duplicator upgrade, pushing quantity up. Hooray! That was fast. Good night, sweet pricks. You have earned your rest. Yeah, check everything. Oh no, mimes! Yeah, I still don't don't have enough there. Uh, I guess I just have to wait a bunch of turns. Uh, yeah, you can just weak attack everybody. So you start the battle at zero MP and you slowly build it up. So you can either like you know, uh, use stuff right off the bat, or wait. That's so interesting. Uh, you can use fire magic, why not? And you can keep using that, because why not also? Nice. So the holy magic is probably going to be safe for a boss fight or something. Gabriel goes hard on that, not the last no-go. There's a lot of enemies around here. Uh, I think I'm gonna just maybe cut out some of the fights here just because they're pretty much the same thing again and again. I wish I could speed it though. So, uh, like, I'll show if anything interesting happens or if there are any new enemies, essentially. Oh, Brood is now level 4 and learns Eager, passive ability. Skull is now level 4 and learns RTFM. Uh, let's see what that is. Eager speed bonus in the first turn. Nice. Uh, scholar. Light, uh, non elemental magic. Nice. One second. And... Uh, between episodes, I'm gonna change the cancel key to like X or something, because this is hurting my fingers. Ooh, a treasure chest lying unprotected in the alleyway. Nothing weird or dangerous about that. It's obviously a trap. Chest! Oh. Uh, axe fish and evil anchor. Interesting. Uh, let's... Most nefarious anchor by Anchor Magazine. Self-explanatory. Yeah, it is. Uh, also, you can see the HP there, which is nice. So let's attack you first, because... Um... You have more HP. Uh... Let's try that. Nice. Ow. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's use some. Let's use some fire magic on you, and everybody else can just do their own thing. Wow, you are really slowed. Oh, uh, we should probably try using magic on this thing. Still not enough for you. Uh, let's just heal everybody. Why not? 
<laughs> okay, neat. You find even softer gloves, weapon for Gabe. Description, incredible comfort for you and the foe. That sounds kind of sexual, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, adds defense also. This is kind of like the previous games as well, so yay. So I'm going to clear out some more of these enemies. This guy's new. Pelicorsair. Uh, holds away treasure in its huge, huge birdie craw. <laughs> wow, nice. That's it. Uh, Bruce and level 5 and Scholar's level 5. Nice, everyone's really catching up. And new enemy here, the clown. Of course there's a clown. Oh no, a clown! See, even the game knows. So these guys don't have a lot of health. It's great. I mean, not the clown, the, uh, the robots. Oh uh, yeah. Bigger is better. Apparently bigger is better. Is that because of the little, little shoot there? Let's not ask. What do we got here? 50 bucks! And here's a new enemy too. Taiko, why is an octopus covered with my makeup running towards us? Indeed, Gabriel, it is a question for our age. Why, what would convince an octopus to abandon the shackles of normalcy and don the attire that accursed brotherhood? Surely it is a case of the shattered young invertebrate Empty within, more mal husk than mollusk. This is an octopus who failed to receive the requisite love and attention in his home. His parents have 16 arms between them, yet moist hugs are still in short supply. Now why is it running? Oh, I don't know. Um, exercise? <laughs> anyway, uh, the Mimapus guy. That's horrifying as well. Uh, took a vow of silence as a young cephalopod. Yeah, let's have you attack the Pelicorsair, and you can have everybody else- Yeah, I just want to get rid of some of the other enemies, so that we have less attacks at once. Probably didn't need to use that right away, but it's okay. Foya Bull. See, like, the first turn, you don't really see the, the speed difference, but then Tycho just starts slowing down that second turn onward. Look at that. Just look at the difference there. Uh, no, still not enough. He's gonna die this turn, though. Or not. No, we're going to nuke him. Thermonuclear. Yeah! <laughs> uh, Bruce now level 16 learns Brute Punch. Scholar's level 16. 6 and learns Ice Shards. Let's check those out. Brute Punch, medium attack. Medium ice magic. Oh, excuse me. Free muter. Uh. Talk like a mime pirate day never took off because it's impossible! <laughs> ba, ba. I always loved how catchy the music is in these uh, Z Boy games. It's always fun. And that's it for you. Bosses, I'll use more strategy, but here, eh, uh, here's a new guy. Certain battles of unique battle conditions, they uh, have a large effect on the outcome of the battle. For example, the next battle, your character begins with the battle with a lot of MP already stored up, thus allowing them to use their most powerful abilities for right from the start. Some special battle conditions are helpful and others are harmful. Be sure to adjust your strategy accordingly. How interesting. It's on now, it begins with 7 MP. Oh gosh. Um, well, what do we have here? Evolve to thrive in a world of filth. Born in a world of filth. Um, fine, you can use that. You can try out ice shards, and you're going to nuke everybody. Nice.
Oop, sorry. That's still hours ago. What is he doing in a phone booth? Gabe opens the phone booth and a mind falls to the ground. Oh, it's the guy that called us, right? There is no thud. <laughs> I love this game. Oh, silent death. Silent in death as he was in life. There may still be a clue found here. Help me pot this helpless body. Look away, precious niece. Oh, niece of the year. Let your Uncle Tycho manage the corpse looting portion. Pray we uncover a clue with ease, so we need not conduct a more comprehensive search. I know what part you're talking about. And I called not it. Even Tycho Man handled the dearly deceased for a while. And I mean a while. As in too long. Aha! Tycho fans had a bundle of photographs. First picture, Mimes having a party and looking all friendly. Second picture, Rift Between World opens up briefly in the sky and starts zapping the mimes and animals. Third picture, zapped creatures morph into monsters and murderous killers. Fourth picture, small pins drop from the portal as it closes. Four below! I mean, how very strange. How very strange. <laughs> this is all the markings of a zero-threshold tempomorphic crisis! Gabriel has seen this particular gleam before, as he knows exactly what's coming next. With the terror of a frightened hare, he claps his hands over his ears quickly, closes his eyes, and begs for death! Items from the path have become folded into vibrating now, like two decks of cards shuffled together and the resulting displacement of matter create a powerful beam of energy that transforms the surrounding beings into monstrosities we've been fighting! Now there are many possible explanations as to why this temporal displacement may have occurred. Chronomacy had gone awry, perhaps not real. A spear of deja vu so extreme pierces the skull, a watchmaker stumbles upon an odd bit of dark magical, appraising a stubborn second hand, a carton of milk left too near the table edge, not connected with other stuff really, but I hate when people do that. La 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 Neganis, we must proceed to the very spot indicated in these photographs. The fate of the very world, yea, the very goulash of existence may hang in the balance. You make declarations of this sort frequently, uncle. In my defense, says the scion of Bra, loading a shotgun. Bray, sorry. It's almost always true. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching. This has been Sephiroth Level 4 with On the Rain Slick Precipice of Darkness. Um, episode 3. Thank you all very much for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.